Now we can get started with our first turning operation. So I'm going to go to my turning pull down and select turning face. For my tool, you'll find there's already some tools loaded with this part and you'll find a CNMG 432 right-handed insert, a standard common turning tool. We're going to select that. And again, I want to point out that there is another series of lessons called Introduction to Turning where we've talked about some of these basic turning commands and gone over some of them in a little bit more detail. For this, we're not going to go into any great detail. We're just going to skim through the tabs here. There's nothing to set up for confinement for face. We don't really need to make any adjustments for our clearance radius. And for our passes, we're just going to take a single pass. We're not going to leave any stock. And we'll go with the default lead-in values. So we'll just say OK. And there's our turning cut on the front of the part. Next, we want to rough the stock off of the outside. So we can select the turning profile command directly off the top toolbar. We're going to be using the same tool. So go to Select and pick that same CNMG 432 insert. Now, since we're using the same tool, we could tell it, don't go home for the go home option. That'll keep it from going back to the tool change position between the two different operations. Since it's the same tool, there's no reason to go home. For our turning mode, we're going to be doing outside profiling. We're going to turn from front to back. Then there's your choice about allow radial grooving. Normally, I turn that off. I don't want it to do any radial grooving, even though there's really nothing for it to dip in. I do that usually because when it gets to the end of the cut at the back of the part, I need to cut past the back of the part, and I don't want it to dip in. If it thinks there's no stock here, it will try to dip in. Remember, we only told it that we are machining this part, so it really doesn't know anything about this extension that we created. For our geometry, we're going to leave that alone for right now. Matter of fact, we're going to leave everything just the way it is, and we're going to say OK. So there's our toolpath. And you can see we have a lot of very small cuts. I'm going to right click. We'll go back in and edit this. We'll go to our passes, and for our roughing passes, I'm going to change that to 120 thousandths per pass. And I don't want it to take a finishing pass with this tool. We'll use a different tool to make the finishing cut. So we better tell it to leave some stock. And I'm going to tell it to leave 30,000 stock. And we'll leave the same amount both radially and axially, which means it will leave stock across the entire part. Let's OK that. Well, it doesn't look like the step got any bigger, so I obviously did something wrong. Let's go back to right-click that profile and edit. Take a look at our passes. And indeed, I did do something wrong. Instead of 120 thousandths, I've got 12 thousandths. Let me get that zero out of there. OK that. And that looks a little more like 120 thousandths pass. Some other things I want to talk about here. And again, this is covered a little bit in the introduction to turning. We want it to cut past this back edge, and you can also see that it's roughing the front even though we already faced the front. So let me show you how to control that really quick. We'll go to Edit. We'll go to our Geometry. And there's two ways I can do this. Let me show you the first one is to say Rest from the previous operation. So this will get the rest of the material. Since the face was already cut, it won't try and cut that. Now you can see it starts right from this radius to rough out the rest of the stock. But that didn't do anything for the back side here. Let me go back in and edit that again. And again, I just want to show you some variety in controlling the part. Let me turn off rest. and This time we'll use confinement. So for the front stock offset, I want to shift this minus 60 thousandths. Remember, we left 60 thousandths of stock on the front of the part. 
Now you can see we have a number of different reference positions, but we'll leave this set to stock front and minus 60 thousandths. And on the back side, I want to extend this by 300 thousandths. We'll leave our reference set to model back and set our offset to minus 0.3. Now you can see it starts at the beginning of the radius where the remaining stock is and it cuts past the back of the part by the 300 thousandths. So that's a couple of different ways of controlling the stock that gets machined.